So in InDesign, um, there's a couple different features and it's really a sort of play around with two different sections and that is pages and layers. And layers is very similar to Illustrator or Photoshop. You can layer things up and you can add pictures. So the kind of the main feature within InDesign is to be able to add images. You can add, um, you know, illustrations that you've done in Illustrator or Photoshop, put them into this document and then kind of arrange them. So it's a way that you can sort of lay out information through this page section. Um, you can also create tools and, and objects as you go through this. So like this is one where I've used just the type tool to create clipping masks on each individual letter to be able to lay that out. This is all one type box right here. Here's another type box. And then use the pen tool and pencil tool to just create objects. So this is not something that I made in Illustrator, but something that is like individually drawn in InDesign. Similar process, you know, pencil tool, pen tool, those kinds of tools to be able to create um, designs in InDesign as well. So it can be a design tool. You can use it to just lay out images from another from another space, you know, Photoshop or Illustrator. And then you can add information onto every page, which is a really nice feature in InDesign. And I'm sorry, that's zooming in too much. Um, but you guys see this text in the corner. You can see that I have, you know, added some information within this. And let me just show you how I set that part up. And then we'll start over from the beginning and how you can lay these out. So this is my first slide. It is just a photograph that I added in there. This is a Procreate drawing that I put in a mock-up. And I just wanted to start with that to sort of show that uh, piece at the beginning. I'm just commanding to go back. Um, there are two things in an image that you want to be conscious of when you place them. And again, you can go to File and Place, and then it will give you a dialog box to search for your image, and you can place those things there. You can also place MP4 files. So if you wanted to put animations in this, you can do that there as well. Um, but two things you want to know about this is there's actually a blue bounding box around every photograph and a brown bounding box if you double click on it. And this one is a little bit different scale. And as you can tell, if I hold shift and click and drag on this one, here's the brown bounding box. This is actually the photograph inside the cropping box. And in InDesign, you have a cropping box, which you can tell I'm changing the size of the cropping box in this sense, that's automatically included into every photograph or image or object that you put into InDesign. This makes it really fast for me to create different layouts. So if I wanted to do something like this and kind of create columns of this thing, I could do that. Um, I can click on this little selector here. It looks like a camera icon to be able to click and drag and move this one around. So I could have sort of multiple cropped images of this same thing as part of my layout because it's literally just cropping boxes. So then I can move this one around to sort of give you a different view of the same object, making it look like it's been cut in the middle when it's really not. I'm holding down Option and Shift and drag to be able to move that around. And then you click on this big sort of picture icon to move the brown uh, object itself, right? It has a brown bounding box around it sort of differently. So I can kind of line these up in different ways and create interesting cropped compositions by just duplicating this object around, which is kind of fun. So that's one of the basic things in InDesign is that there's two boxes around every object, a cropping box, which is the blue one, and then the brown one, which you can get to by dragging on this kind of photographic icon. And then you can double click if you want to change the size of that object to change the size. You can also, if you like the scale or the lockup of the two objects and you just want to you know, resize them both, if I select this object, I can hold down the command button on my keyboard, start clicking and dragging. And then if I want to save the same proportions, hold shift. And now it will resize both of those at the same time. Um, any questions about that so far? Okay, I can't hear you, so can't see your thumbs up. But if that is good, if you feel comfortable with that, that's kind of the one of the biggest things that's different from Illustrator to um, InDesign is that there's kind of a cropping box and everything a little bit different than Photoshop as well. You don't have to add a mask to things. It just comes this way, which is really nice. So you can do some fun kind of interesting layouts, even off of just one object kind of playing around with making duplicate copies of things and then changing the position of the photograph or size of the photograph on the inside. So layout becomes a really big feature or focus of your work in InDesign, um, making it pretty fun. Now I also want to space these out, which is nice if I go to the properties panel, should be able to get some alignment tools to be able to make sure that the spaces in between are consistent. And then this one's a little bit too long. Let's make those all match up on a baseline. So something that's kind of interesting rather than just having a photograph right at the beginning, you can do some fun stuff with it too. 
Um, so just some fun stuff in general. Now, the, one of the main features, another one of the main features, sort of the second or first sort of main feature within InDesign is this master page section. And it's actually at the top of your pages panel. I'm just dragging this bar in between so we can see the master page section here. The master pages, and there's always a none, and you do start with a master page. You can have as many master pages as you want. And the way that these are set up is sort of like a way to control um, your chapters in a book. A lot of times in the chapters in a book, they're gonna have like the title of the chapter and the page number at the top. In which case you could control that with the master page rather than having to go and duplicate an object. You know, in Illustrator, you could lay out, you know, hundreds of pages of design um, or artboards, and then you'd have to just duplicate the page number and change the page number on every single one of those, which would be super tedious, right? So if you want something to be consistent across the board, um, you can add an A master page. And if you can tell right here, I have the little letter A over top of each of these pages. Now I can double click on these pages to go to them, and this one doesn't have hardly anything on it except just a text box and this information here at the bottom. And you can tell that I put this information in the A master page. And for me to be able to change this, if you can tell none of these things are editable on the page itself, right? I'm on page number four, you can tell that one's selected. I can't click or drag on any of these types that are here at the bottom because those actually exist in my A master page. So let me double click. And now I'm inside the A master page. If you can tell I'm not actually inside the document at all. If you double click here and I'm zoomed out, you can see all the pages sort of going down in a list. But here in my A master page, it's not actually part of the print document. It's just a space to be able to have and add information. So for instance, if I wanted to add a box in this, that was a different color. I could sort of like say, oh, here's a box. And now if you can tell, that is applied to every single one of my layouts on all of my designs, except for this one, because there's a photograph on top of it, uh, where you can see that that bo red box has been added. And again, because these all have the A master page applied. If I didn't want that information or this red box added to a particular layout, I can click and drag on this section that says none and just drop it off. That will get rid of all of the things, in this case, also the black background that I have in the A master page. I can then also click and drag on the A master page to add that back in. So you can apply certain design elements that you want to keep consistent throughout your document to every single page. And so if I go back into this A master page by double clicking on it, I can delete that red box. You can also set up things in layers. So in this case, my black box that's in the background is locked. If I go to my object and unlock all things that are on the spread, now you can see that there's my black box that I could actually set up. The lock hotkey for things in InDesign, I believe is Command L, and that will lock that object, whatever object that you have selected. Um, control, if you're on a PC, Control L or Command L. Um, and this will allow me to sort of like add things in here in layers. Now I knew that if I wanted to add photographs, for instance, like this page, which is a nice kind of a view here of this, kind of mountain range, if I wanted to be able to add my type on top of that while also giving me the option to add a photograph onto this page here, um, this one is also locked, so I need to go to object and unlock on spread there. So there's my photograph. Um, I could sort of move it around if I wanted to, and you can tell that the type that I added in the master page is on top of the photograph, even though the photograph is on this page itself, on this layer, but the black box is also at the bottom. So that's something that you can do with the layers in conjunction with the master pages. So I double click the A master page. Um, I actually added a new layer in my layers panel and let me just unlock that and you can see that these are all part of that layer two. That means if I do all my designs in layer one underneath the layer two layer in the layers panel, that is actually going to make it so that I can make sure that those objects are always on top. If I go to my window here and view under the menu options and change my screen mode from preview to normal, you can see that my, my guides and stuff are set up here. So I've sort of got some margins and I aligned all my text boxes to the bottom margin. So they're sort of out of the way, but also part of my layout, which is really nice. So um, my idea is to then have this information at the bottom of every single one of my slides, but also make sure that I can still lay out the stuff on my slides. There's two view options that really makes this a helpful thing that you can lay out things very quickly. That's under here in the view menu. Under screen mode, you can change it from normal to preview. And that makes it so I can't see anything that's outside of my bounding box. 
in this case are my artboard. So again, let's see it on here, screen mode normal. There you can see this line, this box here is actually the size of my screen um, or my artboard in this case. And then my photograph actually goes past that. If I go back to view and screen mode and turn it back to preview, now I can't see anything um, that's outside of that box. So a nice way to sort of be able to crop your stuff um, that's a little bit different than Illustrator, for instance, more similar to Photoshop when I have it into this setup. If I also go to screen mode and back to normal, you can see there's little bounding boxes around every object that I put in this. So like this one is a little bit of a gradient um, tool here that I added to sort of make it so that that type in the bottom was a little bit easier to see. So that's just an object that I put underneath there. And again, just making sure that I can see that all those objects. So if it's kind of distracting sometimes to design this way when you're trying to add type boxes onto things or throw pictures into stuff, that all of the type bounding boxes are viewable all at once rather than just when you click on them, like in Illustrator. So if I go to the view menu here, I can go to screen mode and hit preview to actually be able to see my layout without those bounding boxes on. You can also see that the quality of this photograph here is, is turned down a little bit. And that's in the next one, which is display performance. If you set this to typical or fast display, it will lower the quality of your stuff so that you can see things a lot easier um, and kind of work faster rather than what it would actually look like when you print it, which is high quality. And as you can tell, this is a really big photograph. You can kind of see the details here if I zoom in. So the mountains look crisp and clean. If I go to view again, display performance and typical display, it will make it blurry. And that's just to try and save me some sort of like design time. I don't necessarily need to see the exact print quality of, of the photograph while I'm trying to design around it. So those are some useful processes. Let's go back and kind of look at how we can add page numbers in case that's something that you wanted to add. Now, maybe I don't want page numbers on every single one of my pages. I just want it on a few of them, like maybe the ones that are more type heavy um, rather than the ones that have photographs. So maybe I'll add another master page in here. Maybe I do want the page numbers to also include the other stuff that I have in the A master page. So what I'm gonna do is go up to the top here and I'll just add a new master page. And again, that's on my pages panel. There's a little four little lines in the corner. You can click on that and go to new master. So if I put that in there and I, this will be the prefix of B, um, let's name it something like page numbers. And um, we can make it based on a previous type of page, which is also this one. So we want it to include the same information on the A master page. And that'll be the same uh, screen size that we had before. So that's my, my page there. I'll go ahead and click OK. There it's got all my same information. Again, it also has an A on the top of it because it's based on the page, page A. If I were to add anything on page A, it would also add it on page B because I told B to start with A. So hopefully that makes sense there. I'm going to go ahead and add a page number, which is a type box. Everything in InDesign needs to be boxes. So if I click and drag to add a box, I can say, hey, maybe over here, I want to have my page number. Um, you can go to properties while you're typing things to be able to change some the type uh, uh, color here to white so that I can actually see it. And then to be able to add a page number here, I can go to type. Uh, I need to go to insert special character down to markers and enter in current page number. So that'll add in an A. Now it's just an A because I'm actually on just the master pages. And again, they're not part of the actual order of the pages themselves. So if I go back to properties here, I can sort of set up my type if I want to, um, maybe like 30 point for my page number. Let's get crazy, let's make it huge. That'll be kind of fun. And then I can just align this. Now one thing with page numbers that's kind of helpful is that I can use the bounding box to control the space a little bit. Um, I do know I need a little bit more space off to this side because if it gets to like 13 pages or 10 pages when you have two numerals, it's going to make it a little bit bigger uh, this direction. You can reduce the size of a box to a certain scale as, as sort of the smallest size it can be if you double click on any of these corner pieces. So it, again, if it's really big, but I really don't need all this space at the bottom, I can double click and then I'll just make it fit to the content. So a little double click on your, your type boxes there will be nice help you line those up. So let's go ahead and go to my pages here. Again, maybe this is one that I want the page number on. And I, oops, I added that in my A master page. So let me cut that command X. I actually wanted that a part of the page numbers one, command shift and V, which will paste in place. Paste in place, there we go. 
So yeah, it should be part of B. Now this is the one that I wanted it to be a part of, right? Is this page where I'm starting to list my resources and I'll add in some more pictures in here. So if I want to be able to make this have a page number, I just need to drag this option here where it says B and drop it off. And now that page number is added. The other ones are page A's, so they are, do not have it. Maybe this one I also want it to have a page number, so I can drag this onto page number two. And there it shows number two. And on this one, it shows number four. Now I wanna go ahead and add some images in here. So if I go to File and Place to be able to add an image, you can actually queue up multiple images. So if I had multiple layouts ready to go, I can add those in too. And I'll show that here in just a second. So if I go to uh, wherever I put my stuff, find my project here, I'll maybe add some of my sketches, and I can click Open. And that will queue it up. And as you can tell, my cursor changed. It's got a little box that shows me the picture scalar size. I can just click once to add it in. Let's try that one more time. Just click once to add it in as actual native scale or I can click and drag to decide the size of the photograph. So if I wanted it to be a certain size or to fit in with a certain space, I can kind of click and drag and add that in. I can also double click on these the bounding boxes to get it to lock up with the outside edge. And then if I hold Command and Shift and drag from a corner, that will scale it up, both at the same time. So I have sort of my sketches that I wanted to include in maybe this slide and then some information. Um, and then I can kind of play around with the layout a little bit. Um, added some information in here. Um, if I'm not sure what I want it to say, but I want it to have a little paragraph. You can insert filled placeholder text and that'll just add in kind of lorem ipsum, which is the name of the placeholder text that's under the type menu. So I know there's gonna be a paragraph there and I'll try to write that later when I can figure out what I want it to say. And then maybe I need a couple more images down here as well. So I can go to file in place. And let me add a couple at a time. So if I knew I wanted this one and maybe this one. Um, I can select them both from my list. I can click on one, hold shift, click on the other, or I can select multiples in between each other by holding the command button to be able to select multiple pieces. Um, and I can open more than one at a time. And if you can tell, there's a little uh, parentheses there. It says number two, and I can just click and drag for the first picture. That's about where I want it to go. And click and drag for the second picture. Then again, I just need to get rid of these extra space for the bounding boxes and sort of realign them where I'd like them to be in my layout. Um, and then I can sort of talk about in my case study some of the work that I did for sketches on paper. Um, and that might be the theme of this particular, particular page. And here I can kind of reduce the size. If I just want the paper, I can kind of cut off portions of this if I didn't want that little illustration at the top and something like that. So there can be some fun ways that you can use with the cropping, which is really nice. It should feel like that part you know, goes faster than it did before. And as you can tell, I've got smart guides on, so it's easier to see where the alignment goes, which is very helpful. All right, if I wanna add a page, that's probably the last thing we need to do in InDesign, which is to click this button at the bottom of my pages panel, and I can add several at once if I want to. And as you can tell, it just goes off of the last kind of similar setting as the previous ones. If I want these to be A master pages instead of B without the page number, you can just click and drag and drop these on to get rid of those page numbers. So then I would just continue to go down my list. I can add type boxes by clicking and dragging. Um, unfortunately, all type needs to be a, in a type box, even if it's a, a title. So like even these are in type boxes rather than how in Illustrator you can just single left click and you can just type as long as you want and it'll just fill that space. It does have to be in a type box to do that. Okay, 